Today I am renting a U-Haul auto transport trailer and I'm going to tow my 2004 Jeep TJ Rubicon to Hidden Falls Adventure Park with my 2019 Ram Rebel. This is something I've been wanting to do for some time and something I had originally envisioned when I first purchased the 2019 Ram Rebel last year. And that is to use it to tow my 2004 Jeep, particularly with the goal in mind of taking it on a long haul out west to one of the many off-roading destinations I have yet to visit. Since I don't own a flatbed trailer and it wouldn't get used very often to make purchasing one economically viable, the idea came up to rent a U-Haul auto transport trailer. These vehicle tow trailers seemed ideal because of their ease of use and reasonable affordability. Currently, one of these trailers can be rented for around $70 with taxes and insurance for a 24-hour period with unlimited miles. The limited space and age of my 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ Rubicon make it less than ideal to take on a long road trip from Texas to places such as the Rubicon Trail in California and the trails of Moab, Utah. The off-road capable Rebel would not be ideal for difficult off-roading trails such as these, but it will accommodate our family of four and all our gear quite nicely and can still do a little off-roading on the side. We've taken the Rebel on numerous long-distance road trips and found it to be one of the most comfortable rides we've ever owned. Its towing capability is perfect for our needs and I think it will accommodate the job of towing the Jeep quite well. Today's adventure is somewhat of a practice run for a potential trip out west. Since the weather has been quite hot lately, I have decided it's time to take the doors and rear window off of the Jeep. The Delrin door hinge pin bushings that I installed last year made easy work of taking the doors off the Jeep. You can check out that install in a previous video. In order to keep my dome light from staying on, I've installed this, uh Little thing I got off QuadraTech. It's a little switch that uh, allows you to actually it disconnects the fuse for the dome light in the Jeep. So that way, um, when you flip this switch, it doesn't think that the doors are constantly open anymore and shuts your dome light off. Not sure if you can see that, but it shuts it off after a while. There it goes. And see when you reconnect it, thinks the doors are open. It's a handy little, I can put a link to it down in the description, but uh, it's pretty cool. Of course, now that the doors are off, there's no side view mirrors and uh, you still got to be able to see, right?
Uh, just like I thought. Just about a few inches uh, too short to fit this wedges. So I'm going to have to get some other straps to tie into here. All right, pick this up at Lowe's, 12 bucks. Hopefully this does the trick. Hook this on here. and tight. Now, where am I going to put this? It's supposed to go around the frame of your vehicle. Where? This is it, ready to go. Couldn't really find a good place to put this chain around the frame. It wouldn't, uh, wouldn't extend over it up in here. And uh, I could wrap it around the axle, but I was afraid it was gonna pinch the uh, brake lines. So I just ended up putting it here with a D-ring. That's probably not the way it's supposed to be, but it looks like it at least hold it from going backwards. So, all set, ready to go. Let's hit the road. Okay, we are rolling. It's fine back there, but whenever I stop and go, I feel the trailer shift. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to have a shim inside the receiver, or maybe that's just the, I don't remember it doing it that bad with the uh, travel trailer that we towed in a previous video. But the weight seems to be no problem, as would be expected. This is lighter than and that uh, Springdale 29-foot uh, travel trailer that we towed last year. Um, and it did that well. Uh, you can hardly feel the weight of that, really. Uh, but then it's got a weight distribution hitch and um, sway bar, sway control, and uh, electric brakes, of course. Uh, where this does it, this is a U-Haul auto transport trailer. It's uh, their, their um, standard, uh, it's their trailer that's made to put your vehicle all four wheels on it, not their little tow dolly that they have. And I got this idea from uh, another YouTube video where a guy went to go pick up a, uh, an old uh, Blazer or something, off-road vehicle, and it had pretty large tires. He, was, he flew out to get it, but he planned on driving it back. But uh, it turned out he, it wasn't really that drivable and he didn't want to take a chance, so he rented a, a truck and a U-Haul trailer uh, such as this and towed it back. And I was like, wow, that might be an option uh, for wherever I want to take this thing out to the Rubicon Trail, which, um, you know, I don't see myself driving this uh, 1,500 or so miles, however far it is from uh, Austin, Texas, all the way out to you know Lake Tahoe area, wherever the Rubicon Trail starts. Um, I could do it, but I mean it doesn't hold a lot of gear in the TJ. That you know you got to camp halfway through. Of course, I'd have to bring that gear anyway. But the truck, 
the 2019 Ram Rebel would make that trip so much more comfortable, more manageable. It, it would, you know, ease the wear and tear on the driver and the passengers for such a long distance. Um, the only downside I see is the speed. Uh, this trailer says it's only rated for uh, 55 miles per hour. Uh, from what I read, people drive it faster than that. Of course, they they have to have these rules for. Uh, for legal purposes to cover their butts. Um, but the trailers, from what I read, are really solid. I mean, they have to be if they're made to be rented over and over again and then withstand abuse and then neglect. You know, people don't treat this like their own trailer, I'm sure. And um, it has to be able to withstand all that and be simple and easy to use that almost, you know, anyone could, could use it. I mean, they're trying to use trying to market it to the general public. Hey, do this yourself. Move your your own vehicle across the country. Um, so it's kind of, this is kind of a practice for that. This is the first time I've ever towed um, a vehicle behind another vehicle. I've towed trailers, I've towed campers, I've driven um, big moving trucks, uh, like the Penske truck, U-Haul trucks. Uh, I've driven Penske's across the country when we moved from Las Vegas to Texas. And um, so we'll see how this goes. Playing it by ear here. I'm going to try to make it to Hidden Falls tonight. Uh, hopefully it's not too late. I, I think the office might be closed, but I think there's an after hours way to pay uh, for your overnight camping fee in the primitive area. Hopefully I'm allowed to bring a trailer there. We'll find out. Yeah, I was wanting to camp tonight. Are you a member? Yes. I know. Have you been here at all today? No. you have your car? Yes. Okay, I have your sign. Despite the fact that it was after hours and the main office was closed, I was still able to get into the park and camp. All I had to do was fill out an after hours envelope, the proper amount of money for one night's camping, and I would be all set. Or the lady at the gate said I could stop by the office the next morning and they would take care of it. There are no reservations necessary for primitive camping at the designated Area B. After a short drive around the Area B primitive camping site, I quickly found this nice secluded campsite along a wooded embankment that was sufficient. Now it was time to set up camp for the night, have a quick dinner, and once the sun goes down, I will unload the Jeep venture out on a little night run to Wildcat Mountain. Friday and Saturday night are the only two nights of the week that night wheeling is allowed at Hidden Falls.
were a fair amount of people out on the trails in different groups, but it was still easy to find relative remoteness and solitude. I witnessed an excellent moonrise from the top of Wildcat Mountain that none of my camera equipment was able to do justice. After a while, I returned back to camp and called it a night. The next morning, shortly after the sun came up, I ran the second trail in my series on the trails of Hidden Falls. Check out the North Peak North Pole Trail. A link will be posted at the end of this video as soon as it is available. After the trail run, I loaded the Jeep back onto the U-Haul trailer. It was nice not having to worry about airing the tires up in order to get on the highway. You know, I never realized this before, but the trailer provides a a level plane which makes it really easy to reconnect the uh, uh, sway bar disconnects so that's definitely a plus of the trailer because whenever you're trying to reconnect the sway bar on a slightly uneven surface and it's amazing how just the slightest variance slightest unevenness and uh, it's hard to line up that those sway bar links but it was a piece of cake here on this trailer Got 9.2 miles per gallon after 126.6 miles. Well, I just dropped the trailer back off at U-Haul. Uh, I did great. Um, I'm actually very impressed with this. It's anywhere I gotta drive this thing for uh, many hours on end, I think this will be a lot more comfortable and probably just as fuel efficient as taking the Jeep. And then it kind of saves the Jeep. Then if it, something breaks, you don't have to worry about uh, having another vehicle. So I'm very pleased, very impressed. Uh, the Ram Rebel is a, is a champ. We'll catch you on the next adventure. Until then, have a good one. <laughs>